Can you imagine what it would be like not to have the Bible in your own language or not even to have access to the Bible and to be only told what the Bible teaches? The Bible way back in the late 1400s was in the Latin translation and the common man had no access to it. But it's amazing how God raises up someone to bring the Bible into the common language, the English language for people of those days. His name was William Tyndale. He was from a very much, uh, a fairly wealthy background, well educated at Oxford and Cambridge. It said of Tyndale that he could speak fluently eight different languages. And God raised up this man, uh, saved him uh, and brought to him this desire, this deep, deep passion to have the word of God brought to the common man, brought to everyone. Uh, the the ploughman, as he talked about in the field, brought to everyone the, the word of God so that they could read it for themselves, so that they could understand what God was speaking to them about. And Tyndale himself, of course, uh, as he uh, wrote books, he started to come up against the church of the day. And eventually he was to leave for Germany after he was not allowed to publish the books that he wanted to uh, in England. And what happened to him was he was to spend the next 12 years of his life in exile. And during those years, he was to uh, translate the Bible uh, from the Hebrew and the Greek into the English language. He lived in little back rooms in different countries, mostly in places like Germany and the Netherlands. And there he translated the, the New Testament and the Old Testament. Copies were sent to England and on occasions, many occasions, they were uh, burnt by those in authority. The king hated them. And of course, there was the price to pay. After 12 years of translating the Bible, and he had uh, the New Testament and the English, what we would call the Tyndale translation. We find what happened to him in the uh, Fox's Book of Martyrs uh, at the end of his life. And here we find, it says, Tyndale was eventually captured by the emperor in Antwerp. His books were all seized and he was in prison for a year and a half before being condemned under the emperor's decree of Augsburg. He was tied to the stake strangled and burned in 1536 dying with these words on his lips lord open the king of england's eyes the cost uh, of what happened to tyndale the cost of producing the new testament the old testament for the common man amazingly after he died a few years later uh, the king of england reversed the decision. The Bible was allowed to be brought in uh, to England itself. And of course, that translation, the Tyndale translation, was later greatly used in the 1611 King James Version of the Bible. Uh, they say that up at 90% of the King James Version of the New Testament, and up to 70, 75% of the Old Testament, was taken from Tyndale, uh, his translation that he had done at an earlier stage, the cost to him, his life. Uh, he had given his life, and in fact worked so much of his life, to translate the Bible for the common man. And so it reminds us today that uh, what we have in our, our language, what we have before us today, even as we read just a short passage in closing today, and think about the Bible and the preciousness of God's word to us, what does it mean to you and me? Does it remind us uh, of what it cost others to have this in our language so that we could understand God's word, so that we could follow God? Psalm 119, of course. Uh, Psalm 119 is written so much about the, the Bible, meditating on God's word. In verse 97, it says, Oh, how I love your law. It is my meditation all the day. Is that something that we can think about, how we can meditate throughout the day, even in God's word? Think about what God has given to us, the word of God. Your commandment 
makes me wiser than my enemies, for it is ever with me. And then in verses 103, it says, How sweet are your words to my taste. Isn't that lovely? Sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through your precepts I get understanding. Therefore I hate every false way. And then in verse 105, your word, a famous verse in many ways, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. How precious is the word of God. Uh, that lovely words, how sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Uh, will you today take time, maybe even in Psalm 119, and just contemplate what God has done for you, the word of God that he has given to us, so that we may meditate upon it. We may we, we not only read it, but we may meditate upon it, and we may follow its instructions. We may live by it. And if you haven't been reading the Bible for a little while, or you know of others who haven't maybe, encourage them. Why not give someone a Bible? Why not encourage them to read again? Or they can download a Bible. So many ways today of reading God's word so freely. But let's remember the cost that it was to William Tyndale and others to produce the scriptures so that you and I today could have those scriptures in our own language. Thank you once again for listening.